Shalom. I want to give all the praise and all the glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Raka, Kudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akya who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. So today the spirit has me in uh, Esther and chapter three. I'll go in on, um, you know, basically reading, reading this chapter. The first, the thing that comes to mind is uh, there is nothing new under the sun. All right. And, uh, you know, the heathen are always, are always against the Israelites. <clears throat> And we're just, uh, you know, we're always subject to the uh, the strange laws of the heathen. So during the time of Esther, it was no different. All right, but because remember, we don't always, you know, while well, the remnant, the Lord puts the spirit on the remnant to, uh, you know, we don't want to. We're not in that spirit of honoring the <clears throat> the heathen and their strange laws. All right. Let me see. I'm trying to look something up real quick. Salakia. I'm going to read this precept before I read Esther in Baruch. You know, because you got to remember where we've been in captivity and so many different captivities under the heathen. And, you know, the heathen, they're not, they're, they haven't been given the laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. So they don't follow no laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. All right. So us being in captivity and under the heathen. You know, we're, we're subject to uh, strange laws, and um, it's just uh, something that the remnant or the elect, the Lord puts a spirit on us, where even if in our captivity, we're not going to be following the laws of the heathen, you see? We're not going to honor the heathen. So let me grab Baruch 4 and 3 to start this off. It says, Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto unto thee to a strange nation. All right? So the elect is always in that spirit where no matter you know, matter what's going on, our our focus is to please Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and not the the commandments of kings, okay, or the laws of strange laws of heathen kings or heathen presidents. You know, the modern day king would be these these presidents here in Babylon. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get another one real quick before I jump into Esther. <clears throat> Con, there's a this is a good one because this I was thinking about this. So we'll go to Maccabees, 1st Maccabees, one four four, baby. It's the 144 verse. It says, For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. You see? So these are, these are laws that are strange to um, our people, to the Israelites. And that's when you're in the right mindset, because our people aren't in the right mindset. So they're going to be okay with, uh, you know, following the strange laws of the, the lands. Okay. So, um, and it's nothing new under the sun. All right. Because we're reading about it in Esther, which was during the time of the Persian captivity. And now we're reading about it in uh, First Maccabees, which is in the time of the, the beginning of the Greek Greco-Roman captivity, all right? 
But let me read it again. First Maccabees 1 44. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. See? <clears throat> so the heathens always perpetually trying to get us to follow strange laws that are not customs, laws, statutes, or commandments to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. All right, let's grab this in Ecclesiastes real quick. Because you have the example of in, during the Persian Empire, during the beginning of the Greek Empire. And then there's strange laws now here in Babylon, America. As an example is uh, that, that, that jab that we had to take, you know, which w the elect didn't take it. But they were, they were trying to push that on everybody, right? And now they're saying, oh, you, you, you really didn't need it. Or now, you know, people are having strokes heart attacks, all kinds of different ailments with their health due to taking that jab. But see, through our, our uh, diligence and our wisdom, the Most High kept us safe. Yahweh kept us safe from, from those, uh, those type of things. And, and why is that? Because we, we, we didn't choose to follow the strange laws of the, of the heathen, right? Because that's a strange law, and literally that's a direct um, violation of our law. Because in Leviticus, it tells you that we shouldn't be putting any cuttings in our flesh, including a uh, jump shot or a maxination. You know, you get the point. We can't say uh, the, the word because of the algorithms, and they take down our channel. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to grab this really quick. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done, is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. All right, so Esther in the Persian captivity, Mordecai in the Persian captivity, you know, uh, what we're about to read, you know, it was the king, the heathen kings, um, commanding a strange law against us. Also, during the time of Maccabees, we read about it. That they sent letters to Jerusalem regarding strange laws of the land. All right, and now here, and there's more examples. These are just three that I'm pointing out. But now in Babylon, America, they're asking you to, to, first they were doing the jump shot, and now it's going to be the next thing that's coming, and we all know it, while well, the elect knows it, is that MOTB. All right, that mark of the beast, which is going to be that. RFID C hip. All right. So let's go back to uh, the book of Esther, chapter three. And I just wanted to give a background and a, and, a, and a, you know, lay it out how these heathen are always trying to get us to do and be subject unto their strange laws. All right. This is Esther, chapter three, verse one. It says, After these things did. King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadetha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. All right. So King Ahasuerus, he was um, one. He was actually Xerxes, one of the Xerxes Persian kings, because there were several. That was a popular name during the uh, Persian dynasty. So you, you had a bunch of men who were called Xerxes. And Ahasuerus, King Ahasuerus, no difference. He was, his, he was Xerxes also. I think he was like Xerxes the third, second or the third. But we'll keep reading. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. The kings, and Mordecai was an Israelite. Then the, then the king's servants, which were in the king's gates, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou king's commandment? You see? So they're asking, the, the, they're asking Mordecai, why, why, are you trans, why are you going against the king's commandment? Because he, he didn't bow down to the king, right? Or he didn't bow down to Haman, whom the king had set in charge you know, he had a high seat above all the princes around him. So he was basically like the vice president. All right. <clears throat> verse three or verse four. 
Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. So he was from he was from the tribe of Judah. And he wasn't trying to pay no homage to this uh, this uh, heathen um, king second in con command, which, like I said, he was like the vice president. Verse 5, And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. So, right, so Haman was pissed off because Mordecai was not bowing to him like the rest of the people. Verse 6, and he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. So he wanted to put hands on him. When they had showed him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. So just like uh, now, you know, what they tell you with that jump shot? <clears throat> when Biden was president, or he's still president, but when he was elected, he was telling you, hey, we're going to give... The, the, the so-called, or he had, he said, we're going to go give the blacks, the Latinos, and the Native Americans the jump shot first. You know, in times past, we overlooked them, and we're going to let them be first this time. Why? Because he wanted to put that serpent juice in, in our people first. So this is Haman. He want, you know, he, he wanted to oppress the nation of Israel, all right? And really, this was more towards the uh, southern kingdom because the uh, northern kingdom had already taken the journey or or they were, the, you know, and I'm not saying all of them, but the majority of the northern kingdom, uh, because that was during the Assyrian captivity, that we were already on the in the Americas, all right? And I say we because I'm, I'm of the northern kingdom, um, believed through the spirit to be of the tribe of Gad, all right? So... Um, <clears throat> Verse 7, in the first month, that is the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast Pur, that is the lot, before Haman from day to day and from month to month to the twelfth month, that is the month Adar. And Haman said unto the king Ahasuerus, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And a province is another word for state. So here they had states just like they have the United States. You know, uh, Persia had provinces where which were like states or regions. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. All right. So he's basically causing up a stir with the king. He said, hey, there's these people. They don't follow your laws because they're diverse from all people. And that's because why? Because we've been given the law, statutes, and commandments. And it's only the Israelites that have been given the law, statutes, and commandments. So let's grab that in Romans real quick. Um, let me see. The heathen were not given the laws, okay? It says, for I wish, oh, select you. All right, so this is just proof that the laws were only given to the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. This is Romans 9 and 3, and this is Paul speaking. He says, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth, the word pertaineth means belongs, so to whom belongs the adoption, the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of the Most High, and the promises. All right, so the giving of the law has, is, is to the Israelites, like it tells you right here in verse 4. So that's why in Esther <coughs> 3 and, and verse Eight, we'll read it again. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the states or provinces of thy kingdom, 
and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep thy, they the king's laws, therefore it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. You see, so we're the Israelites. We have certain laws, statutes, and commandments that were given to us of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. All right? And we, you know, we're the ones who should keep these laws. They're not for the heathen. That's why the heathen, you know, you have you have the so-called Chinese or the, the Ch you know so-called Chinese eating all the the uh, abominable foods. You have um, the Edomites coming up with these strange laws that are contrary to the laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. All right, you know, like sticking needles in your arm or in your flesh. That's a strange law to our people. We ain't supposed to do that. Or even what's coming, the MOTB, which is in uh, in uh, Revelation 13, in Lord's will, I'm going to get that uh, that verse um, for in this lesson. But these are strange laws to our people man, that we shouldn't do because we should always put Yahweh Bashem Yahushai first. We should put the laws of Yahweh first, okay? So let's read 9. Are the law of Yahweh should override the law of the heathen or the commandment of the king. All right? Verse 9. And this is wisdom. All right? To keep the laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is, is to bring us to life, bring us to understanding. When we go off and ignore the laws, that's when you lack the understanding of the scriptures. That's when you, you're vulnerable to uh, death, right? Because you're transgressing the law. Matter of fact, keeping the law brings us to life, right? Understanding this truth is what brings us to life. Verse 9. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. So you see that? Haman was trying to plot against the Israelites. Right? He's like, let's get these people destroyed. They don't want to follow your laws. They don't want to honor the the kings. So let's 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 destroy them. And that's basically what the what that jump shot is, is um, it did it what it what it do to a lot of people. It did it destroyed lots of heathen, but more importantly, it destroyed lots of Israelites. Alright. So hey, you don't keep the laws. You lose that head. You lose that protection. The law keeps us safe. Okay? <clears throat> if you're of the elect, the law will keep you safe. Um, sorry, I went to the... Hit the wrong button. Esther 3 and... <clears throat> so you had Haman. He was in the spirit of... He wanted to... He, he was getting ready to pay people to... to uh, to destroy our people, right? Verse 10. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it to Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy, right? So these, remember, these heathen are our enemy, right? Whether it be a Persian, whether it be an Edomite, whether it be, a, you know, whether it be a Hamite, whether it be a Moabite, these, whether it be an Ammonite, all these whether it be an Amalekite, an Edomite, you know, these heathen nations are our enemies, according to the scripture. That's why they put these strange laws on us, because they know we're supposed to keep the laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. But they set us up to fail in these in these captivities that we're in. So this is verse 11. And the king said unto Haman, the silver is given to thee, the people also do also. I'm sorry, the people also to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. So remember, he was his right-hand man. Oh, Haman, right? Haman was the right-hand man of King Ahasuerus, which, again, he was one of the Xerxes kings in Persia. So <clears throat> he's saying, hey, do whatever seems good. Whatever you, whatever pleases you, go ahead. You have my sign. Because he, he gave his ring, it said. He took his ring from his hand and gave it to him, Haman. Which that was like a signature or an ensign, right? Like the seal of the king that was on his ring. <clears throat> Verse 12. 
Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was a and there were and there was written according to all that Haman had commandment unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors that were over every province and the rulers of the people of every province, which is a state, according to the writing thereof, and every people after their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's ring, right? So this was them performing their enterprise, right? Just like they all, he didn't always try to perform their enterprise. Let's get that real quick. Because at this time, their, their enterprise was to <clears throat> destroy the Israelites, predominantly southern kingdom Israel, right? Because like I said, northern kingdom was already, during this captivity, northern kingdom was already migrated unto the Americas, right? Asarith in the scriptures is what they refer to the Americas as. Um, Job 5 and 12 it says, this is talking about Yahweh. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. All right. So during the time of Esther, it was no different. During the time of Mordecai, it was no different. The heathen were plotting against the Israelites and, um, they were plotting to destroy our people and they were sending letters to the every state or province saying, hey, we're going to destroy these people. All right. And um, that's just like what it is with the, uh, you know, the, the maxination, the jump shot, the serpent juice, whatever you want to call that device. Um, you know, the Lord didn't allow. Through the Spirit, the Lord didn't allow every Israelite to take that, to take that wicked device, which, like I say, it's moving. That was the the jump shot was a predecessor to the true agenda, which will be that M O T B, that mark of the beast, which is written about in the Revel Revelation thirteen, which, like I say, that's you know, that's that C hip, that R F I D C hip. Again, we got to use code words so that our videos don't get taken down through these algorithms. All right. And this is uh, verse three. I'm sorry. Chapter three. <clears throat> verse 13. And the letters were sent by posts into all the king provinces to destroy, to kill and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women in one day, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar. And to take the spoil of them for a prey. So they're just trying to destroy us. Okay. They're trying to destroy the Israelites. They wanted to kill us all. And take our and take our belongings. Take our spoil. Right. Verse 14. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people. That they should be ready against that day. You see, so they, hey, the Lord put the spirit on uh, on Haman to really come against us Israelites. And he's going to do that same spirit with Esau Edom. Where he's going to be like, yo, especially once he mandates that, that uh, RFID C hip, all right? Once he mandates that and our people aren't taking it. You're going to get a decree just like uh, just like we're reading about right here in Esther, the book of Esther, where they're trying to destroy the Jews. They're going to say, hey, you don't take that RFID micro C hip, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be perished. You're going to be placed in a FEMA camp. You're going to be placed in jail. All right. We read it in Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. There's nothing new under the sun. All right. And let me grab this real quick while it's... While it's relevant, we'll grab Revelation 12 and 12, <clears throat> talking about Esau, Edom. Well, the last part of this verse is talking about Esau, Edom. But verse Revelation 12, 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So Esau, Edom, he knows he has a short time. Okay, and that's why he's going to come out with this 
persecution and this oppression and this uh, mandation, mandate, mandate, how do you say it? Well, he's going to mandate that mark of the beast, which is that RFID see him. All right. <clears throat> let's read it right here. Well, let's read 15. I'll start at 15. And this is talking about Esau Edom and his, 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 uh, captivity and his oppression this is what we're reading about in revelation 13 and 15 it says and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast which the image of the beast is is the system is his whole his whole system his military system nato um you know everything that is that you see um pertaining to esau edom and his wicked uh power is this image of the beast right that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So just like Haman, right? Esau Edom is going to have the same spirit as Haman, you know, as Haman did in the book of Esther, where he wants to kill the people who don't worship, who don't bow down to the king. Because because essentially when you take that that device in your hand or in your forehead, as we're about to read, you're you're gonna you're making allegiance to the the devil, as it says right here, right? Or we read about it in Revelation twelve. The devil is coming down onto you because he knows he has but a short time. He's coming down with great wrath. Okay, so um, that's that's the same thing that's going to be happening. That he's the Lord's going to put the spirit on this Edomite. That he's gonna you're going to be killed if you don't worship. The image of the beast, meaning you don't take that device, that wicked device. Let's read 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. All right, so... That's what this mark is. It's that it's that device that he's the Esau Edom is going to want to put in, in your hand or in your forehead. Matter of fact, I just saw a uh, article today this morning, right? Well, it's still early in the morning, but I just read an article saying that uh, Neuralink human trials have been approved and and okayed, right? Which Neuralink is that that mark that's going to go in the forehead. It's uh, it's under the um, the uh, <clears throat> well, what's his name? Elon Musk. He's the one who uh, he owns Neuralink, and he it's his enterprise. Neuralink. Look it up. Neuralink is the contraption, the device that is set up to go in your forehead. All right. So this is prophecy that we're reading in Revelation thirteen sixteen about a prophecy. That you know, what I'm saying that it, it it's this was written, you know, over two thousand years ago, but yet here we are in the time of the manifestation of this prophecy. All right, the prophecy is speaking. Okay, and it says, "And no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name." So you ain't gonna be able to buy or sell if you don't have that mark in Esau's wicked kingdom and his wicked device you don't take his device and it said earlier in 15 at the end it says you don't worship the image of the beast you should be killed all right so it's the same thing that Haman was doing all right um let me see I had a precept come to mind and that slipped my mind <clears throat> Let's see. All right. It's, it slipped my mind. So I'm going to go back to Esther. Esther 3 and verse 15. Remember, he's plotting against the Israelites, wanting to kill us. It says, The posts went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shushan, the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shushan was per perplexed. All right. And that means puzzled or baffled. The people couldn't be, believe like the decree. Because that's an extreme decree, right? 
But it's the same thing that this devil's gonna do, man. He's gonna come down with this with this MOTB. And if you don't take it, right now it seem may seem far fetched to you uh simps out there. But when once you see it being pushed, once you see it um you know, once you see it actually come to pass, then you're gonna you're gonna realize that hey, there was a prophet among you. Um Revelation three and 10, and I'll close out on this. It says, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking, it says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And this is dealing with, um, the hour of temptation is dealing with that moment when you're literally in the situation where, hey, either you're going to have a chance to take the, the, the chip or the, M A, you know the M O T B, mark of the beast, and I should have said C hip, but anyway, um, you either going to take that C hip, or that mark of the beast, or you're going to be put to death, or in a FEMA camp, or in a prison, or in a jail. You know that's that hour of temptation, because the Esau Edom, he's going to, he's going to, he says right here, he's going to try the whole world with that, he's, I, which shall come upon all the world and try them that dwell upon the earth. You see that? So it's gonna it's gonna be a, a, a situation that that's why he calls it the new world order, because the whole world is gonna be subject unto this uh, strange law, this wicked device. Alright? So, but Yahweh Shai, he gave us a promise. He said, Because you have kept my patience, I'm gonna keep you from that hour of temptation. So he's gonna put a spirit on us of the elect. Hey, we're going to either go under that guillotine because America, Babylon, America has purchased guillotines during the time of uh, the President Obama. You can research it. They they uh, produce uh, in the thousands uh, guillotines, which is going to be um, basically uh, what do they call it Corp corporal punishment or capital punishment. I forget the word, but that's what it is. You're going to be they're going to be putting your heads. You know, some of the prophets are going to die that way, according to this prophecy. And we're going to get decapitated because we're going to, you know, we're not going to honor that strange law, you know. And the Lord's going to give us the spirit to deal with that. To you know, you go into the guillotine, hey, you're going to be able to deal with it because the Lord said He's going to. The Lord Yahweh Shai said He's going to give us the spirit um, because we've kept the word of His patience. All right. So, I mean, he's going to help. He, you're going to be able to deal with it no matter what you got to go through. Because, hey, you got to remember shortly after, once this this uh, micro C hip MOTB, Mark of the Beast, all right, once this is made mandated, you got to understand those missiles are coming right after that. It's gonna, the Lord's going to really shorten the days once that, once that wicked device that's going to go in your hand or in your forehead, once that's mandated. The, you, you can be ready for that last trumpet to blow, which are those missiles, okay? Nuclear missiles, all right? Because remember, we read it in Job uh, 5 and 12. Yahweh doesn't let the heathen perform his wicked enterprise, right? Jehovah, or I'm sorry, Job 5 and 12. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And, you know, if we would have kept reading this book in Esther, you end up, same thing. The the wicked device of the the wicked enterprise of the heathen is not it's not fulfilled. All right. If you know the story of Esther, you know what happens. Okay. But you know, for you simps out there that don't read the Bible, long story short, hey, Haman creates some gallows for um, Mordecai to be killed, and then ends up getting himself. Uh, you know, it turns back and backfires on him. Where the wicked Haman, he's the one who ends up getting hung from the gallows. All right, you read, go read the book, go read the account in Esther. But I'm gonna read this last verse. No, I, never mind. I already read it. So that that's it, man. There's nothing new under the sun. These heathen are always against us with their strange laws. You know, with their oppression. They know where the Israelites. They know how to keep us away from our power, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai. So they do everything they can, all right, including enforce strange laws on us and, and, and wicked decrees on our people, all right. But if you're of the elect, 
and you're you know it starts out with the prophets we have this wisdom that, that keeps us safe right like we didn't take the jump shot we didn't take the serpent juice we didn't take the maxination so why look at us now we're, we're safe but you like i said you had a lot of people who took that and they they refused to listen to the truth through the prophets and um you know there were consequences. So this is Revelation 13 and verse 7. I'm going to read 18. It says, here is wisdom. This is talking about that mark, that number of the name, the mark of the beast. Verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. All right, which is at six, six, six. All right, when you go into the patent, of that uh, RFID C hip, that MOTB, the last uh, le the last numbers on that patent is 60606. Zero, six, zero, six. Okay, you can look it up yourself, do your own research. But it deals with buying and selling, and a lot of people might already know, you know, the, uh, the UPC symbol, it's the same thing, because, you know, UPC symbols on when you purchase something, they, uh, they have the line... You know, they're coded with those lines, which is called a UPC symbol. Well, in every single UPC symbol, it's the same thing. The For the beginning symbol line re uh, represents or symbolizes six. The one in the lines in the middle of a UPC symbol, symbolic for a six. And then the last line also is a six, which is what we're reading here. All right. So basically... 666, all right? It's prevalent, synonymous with purchasing things, all right? And it tells you in Revelation 13 and 17 that you wouldn't be able to buy or sell unless you had that mark. You ain't going to be able to be a part of their enterprise. And if you're of the elect, you don't want to be a part of that, and you won't be. But you ain't going to be able to purchase anything. But again, 666 is synonymous with the, uh, you know, in these last days. The UPC symbol, the, you know, the MOTB, the mark of the beast. And, you know, the elect are not going to hearken unto that decree. All right, we're not going to take that RFID C hip through wisdom. Right, that's why it says here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding. If you don't have understanding, you're going to walk right into that thing. Just like with the, 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 the maxination, the, the serpent juice, the, the jump shot. Right, the, the people that didn't have understanding walked right into that thing, and now even even if that thing didn't kill you, uh, you can look at reports and research. It's weakening your immune system as we speak. All right, if you took that jab, yes, your your immune system is being weakened, and you uh you know you have it's breaking down your immune system slowly but surely. So hey, when this pan this next pandemic comes. And then, you know, desperate times during the, the, the micro C-hip days, Jacob's trouble. You know, you're going to have a weak-ass immune system. You have people with all kinds of diseases. So how's that weak immune system going to help you out, all right? Because you chose to listen to the enemy, right? And I'll close on that real quick. Let's go to Sirach, otherwise known as Ecclesiasticus uh, 12 and 10 says, never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. All right? So you never want to trust your enemies. All right? Never. Does it say trust your enemy when he has a, a, a device to put in your hand? Does it say trust the enemy when he has a, a, a maxination or a jump shot to put in your, in your shoulder? No, it says, never trust thine enemy, all right? So with that, I want to give all the praise, all the glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekakudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, when I acknowledge all the Akiam, who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth, and Shalom to the elect, Shalom.